Right. So if you've read and understood, considering it critical care scenario, please tell me after reading this scenario, how would you manage this patient? And the uh, the patient is uh, need for the uh, I will manage according to the uh, secret protocol or uh, other research uh, other re other research of the patient was done by by giving the high flow oxygen uh, then uh, then to fifteen milli uh liter per minute then uh, I will insert the two white cannula uh, and uh, I would like to prep I will do the uh, grouping machine and reset the to, Present the uh, whole blood unit after consulting with well, after discussing with the discussing with the hematologist, she uh, uh, prepared the uh, uh, fresh uh, fresh blood plus the transfusion and place a concentrate. Right, and I will call, uh, monitoring uh, hourly close monitoring the blood pressure, uh, pulse rate, uh, GCS, and during upper time, and uh, also the uh, same for the. Uh, so for the full blood uh, basic investigation, like the full blood call, PDIR, clotting profile, and play that call. Uh, another one there, uh, control the uh, bleeding, uh, agent endoscopy, uh, with or without a band like uh, isovision, band like gauge, uh, isovision, endoscopy banning or injection schedule therapy. It's not, uh, it's a banning effect. Then uh, by using many stomach juice, or pharmacologic measure uh, including the osteoarthritis and basal pressing. Okay, considering that patient is hepatitis C positive, uh, yeah. what else do you, and patient is non alcoholic and hypertensive, what else do you need to arrange? And I, because the uh, patient is chronic alcoholic hepatitis C, I need to uh, take care of the chromocytopenia. Yes. So in that sense, since patient is bleeding, what would you do? And I will do the fast uh, 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 frozen plasma transfusion. You will or... blood transfusion. Yes. So mm -hmm. how would you take care of the falling blood pressure of the patient? Because patient has altered mental states. That mm -hmm. means patient is clearly in hemorrhagic hemorrhagic shock. What grade would that be? Uh, I will volume uh, shock grade three. Yes, good. So how yeah. would you take care of the blood pressure of the patient? Uh, uh, first, I would like to do the fluid challenge. If the uh, uh, patient is not responding to the fluid challenge, uh, I will keep the patient in the ACU and uh, given the eye nutrition according to the ICU protocol. Okay, good. Uh, after you've con like you know how to manage the patient but then while managing the patient what are the differential diagnoses that you'll be keeping in your mind the my differential diagnosis are the uh, hemodermesis uh, and melina due to the potter hypertension analyzing in alcoholic and uh, hypertension of alcoholic and hepatitis infection and, and uh, malaria white disease malaria white tear and bovivia syndrome and uh, bleeding by the other. You mentioned portal hypertension. Can you tell me the pathogenesis behind portal hypertension, especially yeah, in chronic the, alcoholic? Yes. Yeah, I think the patient is a chronic alcoholic. The alcohol causes the chronic alcoholic hepatitis, which leads to the chronic liver liver damage. The uh, there will be the chronic liver uh, chronic liver. There will be the fibrosis and. Eh? There will be the uh, there will be uh, uh, fibrosis and nodular regeneration. This fibrosis lead to the obstruction of the portal venous sinus and causing the the portal hypertension. There will also development of the uh, arterial venous sham between the liver, which lead to the portal hypertension. Okay, can you please tell me in this case, in this particular patient, which exactly uh viruses are bleeding? The viruses are uh, come from the uh, portal kidney and also at the lower that of the esophagus uh, around the gastroesophageal junction. Yes, that is between which one is the portal? Yes, and which one is yeah. the portal? Yeah. For the portal system, uh, esophageal branch of the left gastric vein, for the system is uh, for the system is uh, is like a vein. It's like a vein. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Right. If uh, you fail to manage with medical management, how would you control the bleeding? 
I mean, what are the other invasive methods which are available for this patient? First, I would like to uh, do the uh, insertion of the uh, sensitive plasma due inflation or uh, Minnesota due. If then, uh, uh, I would like to do the uh, transjugular intrahepatic or to give a uh, system mission. Yes. Then, uh, it's a free okay. that the free the liver right. transplant. Good. Uh, who would you involve in the management of this patient? In the management of the patient, they will be uh, uh, involved with the uh, in the in this uh, in the in this uh, intensive care unit hematologist. Hematologist. Okay, good. Can you please tell me what are the indications of Minnesota tube? The indication of the Minnesota the juice are the, the failure of the uh, medical treatment, including the endoscopic band ligation. Uh, when there is the new facility for the uh, new facility for the endoscopic hemostasis. Hemo okay, can you tell me, uh, according to the NICE guidelines, how it should be used? Uh, uh, since they get a uh, blood module juice, uh, uh, first be the uh, Position the patient in uh position the patient the elevate the head about the uh, elevate the head uh, head of the bed to the forty five degree. We understand the posterior pharynx and nose uh, nose to it. Uh, hold up, uh, uh hold up the to hold you with the uh, uh look at analyzing and uh, jelly lubricating jelly lubricating is pass the to to the to the nose to the. Uh, at least uh, 50 centi centimeter mark. So uh, we were at that, and then I was uh, do the session of the gas with that, uh, esophageal gas pop. Well, then uh, when the gas with balloon is uh, correctly positioned to the stomach, inflate the, I will inflate the gas with balloon with the 50, 500 meters of the air and close, and clap, clap, sorry, and then inflate the esophageal balloon by the Follow to the thirty to forty millil millimeter battery by the uh, by using the PB uh, three no manometer and collect uh, close uh, collect the pore. Okay. So yeah. Yes, and then to, once it is uh, uh, bleeding control, yeah. then what would you do? When the bleeding control, I will reduce the esophageal pore by five millimeter battery every three hour. Yes, until. Uh, and the, uh, the bleeding control. Uh, yes. If the bleeding control, uh, I will uh, let the, uh, I will give the two for 12 to 24 hours. Very good. Okay. Uh, during this time, this visual bono will be uh, yes. right. to prevent the pressure and the What are the some of the complications uh, which are associated with uh, the use of Minnesota tube? The complications are the uh, aspiration pneumonia, as we have failure of the uh, failure or failure of the due insert uh, due application, uh, a failure of the due and be a pro or in the long term case of pressure necro uh, pressure necrosis and lead to the can lead to the esophageal perforation. Or and, uh, okay, yeah. there are certain contraindications as well that you as a surgeon should know about. Can you name few when you should never ever use Minnesota tube? In the case of the stretcher or injury, uh, yes. When there's the previous history of the stretcher yes. or injury, oh, surgery, surgery, sorry, surgery, yeah. or if there is any t known tear or superficial tear that you already know, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, right. I think now I've covered all the questions that mostly are asked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one maybe with the alcoholic patient. What nutritional deficiency would uh, this patient be? Uh, the patient like will be better. Either may be one and be the deficiency. Yes. And yeah. macrocytic anemia. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am.